The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt's next gen edition has finally arrived, and for the most part it's very very good, and I've already done a video going over the best things in this next generation version, and a link to that video can be found in the description below. But in today's video we're going to be going over the worst things in this next generation version. Now just bear in mind that this isn't to say this next generation upgrade is bad or anything, I think it is very very good, and I think it's very impressive and a very good next generation upgrade, but obviously there's still some things there that I think aren't that good, and in today's video we're going to be covering the worst things in this upgrade, but like I said I've already done a video Video, going over the best things and the link to that is in the description below. We'll be looking at all of the features that have gone wrong or just could be improved by CD Projekt Red. But just before all that I want to let you guys know about the giveaway I am running. CDPR have confirmed that there will be a physical release later down the line for this next generation version of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Providing that you are subscribed to this channel before that physical edition does release you will automatically be entered into a giveaway to win this physical edition on a platform of your choice. All you have to be is a subscriber on the channel. And I also do run a second channel and this channel can be found in description below. That channel provides the latest news regarding Rockstar Games, including the Red Dead Redemption series and the Grand Theft Auto series, and a link to that, like I said, can be found in the description below. So, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any content just like this. Let's get into it. So one of the first negatives that I came across, especially when I was playing on PlayStation 5, this wasn't really an issue on PC, but especially on consoles, is transferring your save. With a lot of next-gen upgrades for games, usually your save will just automatically transfer over to that new version. I saw it, for example, with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I just installed the new version and my save was already there ready to go and I could just continue where I left off on the PS4 version. But with the Witcher 3 next gen upgrade it was a little bit different. You actually had to go back onto the PS4 or Xbox One version of the game and then you have to upload your save to the cloud and then on the newer generation version of the game you'd then have to download your save and then you'd be able to continue where you left off. Now a lot of people including myself as soon as we were able to download that PS5 version we just uninstalled the PS4 version since obviously there was really no need for it since we were playing on the new version. So I installed the new version, uninstalled the old version then when I got onto the new version my save just wasn't there and it turns out that I had to actually reinstall the old version to then upload my save to the cloud and then grab it on the newer generation version. Now on PC obviously this isn't really an issue at all since you can just download the new update and then you just continue where you left off and you wouldn't have to reinstall the game or anything like that. But this was definitely an issue for those players on console and there were a lot of people wondering how you actually do transfer your save since even uploading it to the cloud and doing everything like that wasn't even obvious considering that was a new feature, players weren't familiar with it and they didn't know how to use it so you know it wouldn't be nice if maybe it was easier to transfer your save to the next version since having your save is pretty crucial, it takes many many hours to complete the game so you definitely don't want to be losing that. But obviously on the other hand we do now have that cross progression feature which is really great, it's a really nice feature to have so at the same time obviously we do get that so yeah there's no complaints with that new cross progression feature. So next up it's a bit of a picky one to be honest but we're going to talk about the two different performance modes that you can pick on consoles. Of course we have the graphics option where you are getting 4k at 30 fps with ray tracing and everything like that and then there's the performance option which scales down the graphics but then you are getting 60 frames per second. Now there are some people though that would like ray tracing and 60 fps now you might just be thinking well that's not possible the consoles aren't powerful enough and well they might not be but at the same time it is actually possible. What CDPR could have done, which we've seen with some other next generation games, is added a third mode called performance ray tracing. This is where the FPS would be capped at 60 and you wouldn't necessarily be getting 60 frames per second all the time. If you're in a busy area, it might drop to the 50s or maybe the 40s, but you're still going to be capable of getting 60 FPS at points and you're also getting those ray tracing capabilities or at least more advanced graphics. Now that's not to say that the two current modes aren't bad, they're very very good and they're perfect modes and they definitely work well. However, it would have been nice to see a third mode where we could get ray tracing and we also had the possibility to get the higher frames at points which would have been a nice midpoint I think quite a few people would have picked that. Definitely something that I think the consoles were capable of we see it in games such as GTA 5 with the expanded and enhanced version of that game there was a third mode where you were able to have ray tracing and you wouldn't necessarily get 60 frames per second all the time but obviously at points you would get that and you're still getting higher frames per second nonetheless. So yeah to have that third option would have been really nice. So this next negative sort of goes back to when we were talking about the saves but this is to do with trophies or achievements if that's what you want to call them but either way the trophies and achievements on the next gen consoles won't actually be there for example if you got 100% completion on ps4 that you then started playing the ps5 version your achievements wouldn't carry over and you'd have to get all of those achievements again with most next gen upgrades usually your achievements will just transfer over as soon as you load up this next generation version you'll just see in the top right you'll just be getting all those notifications for your achievements coming through but unfortunately with the witcher 3 next gen version we don't get this maybe on playstation 4 and you worked all of that time to get the platinum trophy and then when you play the witcher 
3 PS5 version, you're going to have to get that platinum trophy again. Otherwise, you're just, yeah, you're going to have zero trophies when you first start out on the next generation version. And the same is for Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S as well. But once again, obviously, if you're on PC, this won't affect you since you're literally just upgrading the current version of the game and you won't be installing a new application or anything like that. Now, this links straight to the next negative, which is that trophies don't transfer with your cross progression. For example, if you have a save on one platform, let's say you have it on a PlayStation 5, you then transfer that save to PC, then you're not going to transfer any achievements that you earned. For example, you may earn some achievements on PlayStation 5 with that save, and then when that save is transferred, then those achievements won't also be unlocked on, for example, Steam or anything like that, or on your Xbox. This does mean that you'd have to go into another save to earn those achievements, and yeah, they're not going to carry over along with the save. At least you do get the save, but like I said, achievements aren't going to carry over along with it. Now, some achievements are programmed to only be unlocked upon the action actually being done, so you can sort of understand why this isn't a feature, but it obviously is still a little bit disappointing. So now we're going to focus entirely on the PC side of things, and the main thing here is obviously the performance issues. Since this next generation version has launched on PC, there's been many, many issues, for example, with the game just crashing when you try to launch it, and there's been general issues with stuttering, with DLSS, with FSR, and with ray tracing. There's been many, many issues with the game. And we see this a lot, to be honest, with PC games. It's very common for a PC game to launch with poor optimization. We do see it a lot, and this is sort of an issue with this next generation upgrade for The Witcher 3. Now, I can't really get into absolutely every issue that there is, but I'll get into a few. For example, some players, when they turn on ray tracing, their game will just completely crash. Some people, when they use FSR and DLSS, their game actually gets less frames than it did before, which makes no sense since with DLSS and FSR, you're supposed to be getting more frames since it's upscaling the resolution instead of using the native resolution. But for some reason on this Witcher 3 next gen, some people are getting less frames than they did before, which isn't, yeah, it's not how it should work. And many people are just getting uh, generally lots of stutters with the game and just general performance issues, which is due to some poor optimization or just some general bugs with the game. Now CD Projekt Red have of course acknowledged this and they are working on a fix and that's what they've said, which which is obviously that's really good to hear so it'll be nice to see if they can get this sorted i'm sure they will i'm sure just with time this will slowly become uh, playable a more playable experience anyway if some people aren't actually experiencing many issues at all whereas with others they are experiencing some issues obviously the better the graphics card then the less performance issues you're likely to experience to be honest but either way it is a bit disappointing that this is how it has launched on pc but yeah hopefully it will be fixed shortly so there we go those are all of the negatives really that i have for this witcher 3 next gen update like i did mention at the beginning of the video i think this is an amazing next gen upgrade and i think it's really really impressive especially for a seven year old game and it even released with some dlc which i think is yeah i think that's insane to be honest and like i did mention at the beginning of the video i have done a video going over the best things the link to that is in the description below so i'd love to hear your thoughts on this next gen upgrade in the comments and if you are on pc let me know if you're having any performance issues as well so if you did enjoy this video please be sure to like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any content just like this and be sure to check out my other channel and link to that is also in the description below i'll see you in the next one peace Thank you.